all that stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, that I don't know. I'm Rabbi Kevin Hale, and I'm a Torah scribe, member of Congregation B'nai Israel. And I, uh, as a Torah scribe, I consider myself the midwife of this Torah scroll. Um, I didn't actually write it, it was written by a scribe in Israel, in Jerusalem, but I am um, assisting the congregation in completing the last 18 letters and it's really like a, a the birth of a new Torah. Yeah, <laughs> My name is oh, Yechiel Lander, who no. is no. a rabbi, an old-time member yet, of the congregation, so I'll, I'll be wearing marking 40 years this uh, July. And I'm delighted to be a participant um, in this Siyum Torah. It is only the third in my entire life that I have had a chance to participate um, in. Though yeah, I have lived for a few the years. Right in the corner. So we're actually starting um, what did you do before, when yeah. you were yeah. hanging around here for 40 years? What did I do before 40 years? No, during the 40 years. Oh, during the 40 years, yeah. I was yeah, sort of in residence at Smith College and Amherst College and created the Jewish community of Amherst. And you were the Hillel rabbi? I was partly Hillel rabbi and partly a college uh, a college employee, both. Oh. It was a unique position, which I loved. So, good morning, Jane. <laughs> you. And you, how are you? You're going in on Judy Tuesday. Judy Harrell. <laughs> Take her down. She's very focused. <laughs> What is your name? From where? From Holyoke. Happy to be here today. What is your name? Oh, hi, I'm Jonathan Parade. And where have you come from? Uh, I was born in Northampton, Massachusetts. I now live in Haiti. Wonderful. Good to meet you. Uh, Give her your name and your child's name. We're filming this for the Starkel Society. Right, ever. Yeah, this is Fair's wife. And this is Logan. Right, and well, I am Simon. Let me do some thinking about it, okay? Well, thank Good. you. Because I want to. I, I, I should have known you'd be here. here. This is it. You're done. Would you give her your name? Give her your name. We're recording this. Oh, David yes. Borbo. Ralph Levy. Thank you. Ron Ackerman. Hey, Ralph, good to Well, I'm Evie Glickman. Good morning. Put a stack on the table. Yeah, they were sure ready. So, I mean, they were. Yeah. Yeah, well, people can take the... Good morning. I am Cleo Gorman. Chaya Bada. Come on, Cleo. How are you? Good morning. How are you? Introduce yourself to the video. Yes, exactly. Hello, Mel. Mel Steinberg. That's me. Good morning. Where are you from, Chelsea? In Northampton. Welcome, Chelsea Klein and Lulu. Lulu, what a wonderful name. Her name Barbara Blumenthal. Paul and Betty Cross. Hi, Sherry Hyman. And Art Hyman. Hello. <laughs> Steve Aaron. Sharon Rook. Marsha Burek. Shirley Cohen. Al Cohen. And that was Shirley Burek, in case it wasn't no. audible. Honey Shirt. Marsha Burek. Did you get your names? Yeah, Mark Bromberg. Paul Slater. <laughs> Your name? Miriam. Miriam Slater. May I interrupt and get your names? Nikki Glazer. Got them already. Your name? Sanford Boonberg. 
What's your name? My name is Louise Bloomberg, maiden name Bloomberg, Mary Bloomberg. And this is our 38th year in this community. So we did see the uh, the rededication of, of the Torah uh, in the 70s. I don't know if you were there or not, but it was also in the... Not, not in this particular Torah. No, but the rededication of, of an, an older Torah, which had been, been amended and uh, rededicated. Do you remember? And, and we're happy to be here for this This is Rabbi Kevin Hale's yes. father. Yes, that's right. What's your name? Kenneth Hale. Your name? Kenneth Hale. Kenneth? Yeah. I live on Long Island. Oh, wonderful. The official reporter of this event, Amy Leo Sorbel. Can I give you a hug? Bernice Alberts. Sally Nell. Harriet Weinberg. Phyllis Hertz. Phyllis Hertz. Uriel Peta. Hello, I'm Janet Greatstern. This is my first to you. I'm very excited. It's something I'll be able to tell the kids about, and they're kind of sad that they can't be here. Irene and Irving Rothberg, R-O-T-H-B-E-R-G. Thank you. Your name? Sarah Weinberger. Say your name? Uh, Taya, I'm your Hanala. It's a Ukrainian name. Stanley Alkins. Dorothy. And you, I got already, Mel. You got me already. I am uh, Rob Dorrit, and I am here for the CU, which I'm very excited about. What did, I, were you once a president? Of I was a former president of Congregation B'nai Israel, and happy to have uh, Leslie assuming those honors now. Like being with you. Good morning. I'm Gabby Reese. These are my two daughters. Hi, I'm Judge Reese. Hi, I'm Mila Reese. Mila Reese. Brand Deutsch. Yeah. I'm Adele Oppenheim, and we've been longtime members of Pune Israel. You and Henry? Yes, my, hus my husband Henry was president of B'nai Israel, and he was a very long time member of the board. My children went to Hebrew school here, my daughter was married here, my son was bar mitzvah here, so we are very attached to B'nai Israel. Hi, I'm Rick Sheldon. I'm the dad of Avi and Mira Sheldon, and I'm delighted to be here today to honor our new Torah. Please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Deborah Jacobson. David Weinberg. Dan Mason. Now. John Todd. Dorothy Nemitz. Wait a uh, and uh, uh, we've been members since 1990, uh, I guess, yeah. Current board member. Chair of personnel currently. Uh, Names of your children? Uh, Hannah, Hannah, Abe, and Eli. Yeah. Hannah, now age 22, Abe, uh, almost 22, Abe, uh, 18, Eli, 14. Michael Feinberg, been long the show since 1978. Only? And I have three kids, and I have two granddaughters who will be with me shortly. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Janet Shevin. I remember 41 years and excitement. Janet Shevin? Janet Shevin. There's a lot of noise around. So and my husband Al is coming along here somewhere. Anyway, this is a really momentous occasion. And a beautiful job you're doing. I was actually Thank looking you. at somebody else taking a picture. Hello there, how are you? Introduce yourself. I'm Gail Seafeld and I'm so delighted to be here. How long have you been a member? I think about three years. <laughs> Lovely three years. <laughs> okay. Hi, would Hi. you introduce yourselves to the camera? Hi, well, I'm Susan Adelson. This is my friend Susan Granitz. And Can you give us your name? Florence Arbonne. I'm thrilled to be here. This is so exciting. My grandfather was the founding father of this synagogue many years ago. What was so his name? Philip Allen. Got it. Okay. Could you introduce yourself? I'm Ellie Rothman. And how long have you been here? 
Uh, it seems like a very long time. I don't know. We joined in, in the mid '60s, something like that. Yeah. And, and the rest of your family members, would you like to put some names in? Uh, my husband is Stan, and he is not here this morning. And my son is David, and he lives in Colorado. And he he went through the whole childhood thing here. Safer Torah in our congregation. This is a historic moment for us. And it's a beautiful moment. The Torah uh, represents the sum total of who we are as a people. Uh, our sages teach that of all the teachings that we have in our tradition to extend gener uh, gestures of compassion and kindness, uh, Talmud Torah Kneged Kulam. Uh, uh, the study of Torah is equal to them all because it comprises them all. And in addition to a birth, uh, it's also somewhat of uh, a wedding because the Torah is the vehicle through which we form our uh, most primal spiritual connections. And so by acquiring a new Sefer Torah in our congregation, we are renewing those connections. This is, it also represents the renewal of our community, the continual renewal of our community, and it gives me um, great joy and great pride to uh, be here this morning as we have uh, folks with us who go back five and six generations in our synagogue. Uh, as well as people who go back five and six days. And uh, together, we create a spirit of, um, uh, of great creativity and wonderful energy uh, and, uh, and honoring of the past and a hope for the future. Um, I'd like to take just a few moments to, uh, to uh, acknowledge and also welcome uh, Leslie Freightstern, uh, who in many ways was a key driving force behind um, this moment uh, and our time together here this morning. Leslie. Thank you, Rabbi. Um, a few people to thank. Let's start by thanking Kevin, who not only is the midwife, but in some sense is the parent as well. It was Kevin who approached us, I think, around January, and informed us that there was a Torah available, a brand new Torah, that if we could raise the money, it would be wonderful in this synagogue that needed a new Torah. And so we thank Kevin for making us all aware of that. I want to thank Sisterhood for slaving away in the kitchen so that when this is all over with, when we go up into Schechter, there will be, or Landberg Rinsky Academy, there will be wonderful food for all of us and a chance just to schmooze together. Lastly, I really want to thank all of you. We made a decision early on that in fundraising for this Torah and in fact for repairing some of the Torahs that need repair and that's work that will be done very soon, that we weren't going to try to, you know, approach a dozen people to try to give big bucks. We were going to try to get everyone in this synagogue to be part of this, be part of the fundraising, that they have ownership even beyond simply being a member of the synagogue. And happily, as of last count, 285 different member units, some individuals and mostly families, donated to this Torah. The Torah belongs to all of us in every imaginable way. One other thing I want to do while I'm up here is, especially if I find a piece of paper, it makes it much easier. I have it. Um,
On May 9th, 1976, a little over 31 years ago, we had the last siyum at this synagogue. It wasn't for purchase of a brand new Torah. It was the dedication of a Torah at the synagogue. And I have a copy of the program, and in it are listed some 61 people who either donated for that Torah or were honored by that Torah. And I think at this occasion, 31 years later, I'm going to read off their names in basically alphabetical order. Happily, some of them are sitting out here now, or their family members are sitting out here now. Some, of course, have gone on. But I just want to, just as we're, in a sense, thinking about future generations that will use this Torah, they were thinking about future generations that were using the Torah that they dedicated or rededicated 31 years ago. And I think it's worth mentioning their names, and I'm going to read them off. Jack August, Jenny August, Alexander August, Morris August, Lillian August, Leonard Alberts, Bernice Alberts, Jessica Allen, James Allen, Sarah Allen, Gussie Allen, Milton Alberts, Virginia Alberts, Rabbi Asher Barzev, Linda Brower, Jerry Brower, Sandy Blumberg, Louise Bloomberg, Richard Braff, David Chesney, Molly Dolgen, Morris Dolgen, Milton Davis, Giuseppe De Simone, Marsha Dansky, Lucille Dansky, Hi Dansky, Bruce Fogel, David Fogel, Lee Gelfman, Harold Gelfman, Morris Gould, Stephen Goldstein, Hi Kantrowitz, Stephen Kaplan, Haviva Langenauer, Max Langenauer, Minnie Lipshires, Peter LeBand, Israel Merrill, Kenneth Merrill, Lester Merrill, Sari Merrill, Nathan Marks, Sadie Marks, Joseph Prouser, Ann Prouser, some other guy that we know, Mel Prouser, <laughs> Maya Rubin, Mimi Rosenberg, David Rosenberg, Andy Siegel, Howard Siegel, Frida Siegel, Leonard Siegel, Abraham Smith, Lewis Smith, Larry Wishnow, Doris Wolf, Dora Weinstein, Herman Wolf. And we thank them. They helped, many of these families went back generations before, helped build this synagogue, and today we're doing our share so that a hundred years from now, when this Torah is still being used, people will know that back in September of 2007, we provided the synagogue with a new Torah. Thank you all. And now we're going to begin. And we're going to begin by escorting the Sefer Torah into the sanctuary under a chuppah. Uh, we don't all need to participate in this, but I would certainly like to invite all of us who would like to, to do so. So what we will do is we'll gather... <laughs> As we escort, as we escort the, uh, the Sefer Torah, we'll uh, chant a nigun together. Uh, this nigun is uh, a nigun that's traditionally uh, sung at Hasidic weddings, and um, we have the wonderful gift of a, of a very talented violinist, Diego Miranda El Male, who plays in the Cons uh, Klesmer Conservatory Band.
today is um, just a few days before the high holidays. And as Torah is fundamentally about waking us up, calling our attention to the pain of the world, and rousing us to uh, develop the spiritual and human and interpersonal connections that make our lives meaningful and bring healing to the world, it's appropriate that we begin with the sounding of the shofar. the writing of a letter of Torah. I, I wanted to begin with just a, a, a few words about Torah and, and God. Jewish tradition is wonderfully vague about the nature of God and Torah. And what this means, first of all, is that when we come to God's name, we don't even agree on what the correct, correct pronunciation is. And Judaism leaves room for a multiplicity of beliefs about what God is. And in fact, we can draw on that multiplicity of images of God as needed. So whether God is a being that exists outside of our understanding, or God is a feeling, or God only acts through people, we can use the idea of God to describe something central to who we are as Jews and as human beings. By the same token, Torah is wonderfully vague. Torah can be, as we said famously on Bill Dwight's show, it can be all of teaching in the universe. It could be the very specific Torah scroll here containing the first five books of the Tanakh written by hand by Jews. And there's also a vagueness about what is the source of Torah. Is Torah written by human beings? Is Torah divinely inspired by God? Was Torah, as Torah says, first told to Moses orally, and then, according to the mitzvah number 613, Moses wrote it down? What is clear to us is that however you consider Torah, and however you consider God, Torah is God's gift to the Jewish people. And who should be writing Torah? Now, we all know that we should be studying Torah. But as we read actually yesterday in the Torah reading by the newest adult member of our congregation, Rachel Leader, and it says it on the back of your program, And now, y'all, all of us, should write down this song. That means that even though in practice it takes a highly trained scribe to write a scroll, and I'll speak in a minute about this scroll in particular, the commandment to write Torah is incumbent on every one of us. And maybe it's a reminder, it's similar to the Muslim practice of once in your lifetime, you might go to Mecca. For a Jew, if possible, once in your lifetime, write a whole Torah scroll. <laughs> but, maybe that's not practical. So, an interpretation of the tradition is that even being involved with writing a single letter, or in this case, writing a dot of ink to complete a letter, and some would say even buying a Jewish book for your library, that's completing the last mitzvah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Buy a lot of Jewish books. <laughs> In a moment, I'm going to invite Rabbi David up, and together we will do Nitilat Yadayim, hand washing, and say a special blessing for the writing of Torah. But I, as the quills are going around, I wanted to sort of introduce who was up here. 
First of all, we have a Torah scroll. And this is a wonderful scroll. It was written by uh, a scribe in Me'er Shirim who spent probably a year. And if this is any indication about the world in which this scribe lives, I asked Rabbi Shmuel, who is an elderly scribe, who actually trained my late teacher, tell me something about the scribe. And what I meant was, where is he from? How did he study? How does he see the world? And this is what he said. He's in his 40s. He's married and has children. He's an ethical person. And he spends his day doing two things, studying Talmud and yeshiva and writing Torah. So he wrote the, all of the 304,805 letters in the Torah, except the last 18 letters were written broken. Or that is, he didn't quite complete them. And because not every one of these letters is complete, we no longer, we have a, we have a Torah in labor, but we no longer have, we, we not, do not yet have a Torah that has been born. 18 groups or individuals will be coming up and assisting me as each letter is, com is uh, completed. And then when Rabbi David completes the last letter, it will become a kosher Torah. So the Torah scroll is, um, I don't know if you noticed that as I unwrapped it, the binder was on the outside of the mantle to signify it is not yet a kosher Torah. And it is uh, sewn with uh, a special kosher thread made from the sinew of a kosher animal onto a set of rollers that actually happened to be constructed by my brother David. And uh, one side was sewn with a needle that he constructed out of silver. Um, there's many traditions around the writing and repair of Torah. One of the most important is no violence. So a silver needle suggests something precious rather than a steel needle, which is a reminder of war. Then moving over here, we have uh, Torah ink, which is made from special ingredients. And I'm going to pour out a little bit of Torah ink that will be used for the writing of the quill of the letters. There are 18 quills being passed around that come from a kosher bird, a turkey. Uh, and um, that's probably enough for now. Um, and then finally, one of the most important things is that we have a, an existing copy of the Torah, which you could call a tikkun. And in this case, it's actually a, a, a humash that we believe my grandmother gave to my father around the time of our mitzvah in Germany in the mid-30s. And we're honored to have my father, Ken Hale, here. It's also here because Torah may not be written from memory. And even though we know the shape of those letters and we're only writing in ink, we need to have a copy. By the way, to fill in a mezuzah, you're allowed to write from memory. <laughs> so, uh, without further ado, we will do a ritual hand washing, and you're welcome to say amen to our, to our hand washing. And now we will say a blessing for the mitzvah of writing Torah, only said once, and uh, that is Al Tivat Sefer Torah, and I invite you to say Amen to that as well. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kirshanu B'mitzvotav Kitzivanu Al Kitzivat Sefer Torah. Amen. We do need those quills back. <laughs> <laughs> Three are still missing. So, uh, there's another order of business, and that is we need to sort of get used to writing. And these are the quills. And by the way, uh, this is a very fancy way of cutting a quill, but when we're usually working, we just cut off this part and use the sort of big variety of quill. But for ceremonial purposes, we leave the, the furry part. Um, but there is a great tradition of begin before setting down to doing any writing, 
by the way, raise your hand if you can't hear. Okay? Before sitting down to do any writing in Torah, it is an ancient custom to first write out Amalek's name, evil Amalek, the one not to be named ancestor of Haman. And just as at Purim, we, we drown out Haman's name, the custom is, and it's actually a mitzvah, to erase the memory of Amalek from under heaven. The text of this is actually on the back of your program. And how often do you get to blot out Amalek's name? Well, scribes do it all the time. So I will be writing it here on a piece of parchment. And uh, then we will, as I scribble, we will be erasing Amalek's name, and then we'll be ready to write. By the way, uh, I'm actually not using one of the honored feathers. I'm using separate ink and a reed pen that hasn't been used for any other purpose for writing Amalek's name. Partly in order that we don't confuse the writing of Torah with the writing of Amalek's name in the crossing out, even though Amalek is in the Torah. But also, a reed pen is even a more traditional tool for writing Torah, and that's how this Torah was originally written. Normally, I'd sing out the letters, but for Amalek, I'll just say them. Amalek, Ayin. You can say it after me. Ayin. Ayin. And Mem. Mem. Lamed. Lamed. And here's a letter you haven't heard before. Kuf Sofit. Kuf Sofit. I'll tell you about that in a minute. So, if you would join me, uh, here, I'll, I'll see if we can do it together. Team Kay, Ed, Zecher, Amalek, Mitacha Tashamayim, Mitacha Tashamayim, So, in a moment, we'll begin the calling up of groups for writing letters. Part of the choreography. Now, as Torah tells its own story, Torah was said aloud by God to Moses, and then Moses wrote it down. So, with the writing of every word and every letter of Torah, and by the way, how, do we, how is the Torah described in the mitzvah? And now, sing for yourself, write down this song. So, an ancient custom is that we will sing out the word, and then sing each letter aloud, and with that saying it aloud, the letter will be written. So we're reproducing that transmission of Torah from oral to written, and also it helps us to remember to write the correct letter. <laughs> the last letter of every word will be called a sofit, which means final, even if it's not a final letter, to remind us that it's at the end of the word, and we must now leave a space. <laughs> A quick reminder, uh, we do have in one of the classrooms, we do have someone prepared to work with the children if you find your children are getting antsy. Uh, and then come back at around 10.45 or so when we start calling up the uh, families with children. There's also musicians, guitarists for children and families in the library. Very good. So. If your kids are antsy, or even if you just think they would enjoy doing that, feel free. So, one other brief comment I want to make. You notice when the chuppah came in, four women were carrying the chuppah. Just want you to know that 35 years ago, four men were carrying the chuppah. The score has been even. If anyone here at CBI 35, 50 years from now, when they have the next, you can tell them it's okay to be two and two. <laughs> so we want everyone to, to have the mitzvah, everyone to feel part of it. There are 18 separate groupings. The last two will be individuals. Feel free to come up. 
anyone that connects with you. And if after you come up, you realize, oh, I should have gone up with that group that's called later, come up a second time. It's quite all right. So we're going to start. Everyone who joined this synagogue from the year 2002 until now, the last five years or so, please come up. Sing the letter together. Uh, but before the right is done, every, for every letter, we're going to be saying the kavanah, the intention, is printed on the back of your program of your will. And if you're a male, you can say kotev, or if you're a female, you can you. say kotevet, or you can choose your gender. Um, and then each fresh quill will then be collected uh, in a separate place. And the 18 quills, I understand, will be uh, utilized in some sort of commemoration of this moment. Oh, that's the most important thing. Right. Now, I am just the vessel. So, just like we sometimes do with a challah, everyone should be physically connected to me and the quill. And if you'd rather just stand by and not touch, of course, you have the right to do that. So that consider that each of one of you who's connected is actually driving my hand. So each person should touch the shoulder. Or of someone. Okay. Everyone should touch someone else's shoulder. Reach out and touch someone. So let's say the covenant together. Hareni Kotev Sefer Torah Zo Leshem Kedusha Sefer Torah. Amen. Asa.
machines, if you're voting, you connect something with the with that's essentially what we're doing with the quill. We're not actually writing the entire letter, but since the scribe did not complete writing the letter, we are doing it and we get the mitzvah credit. <laughs> so here, why don't we just
Society of Western Mass is recording this event. It'll be in the archives. The next group, people who have been members, a family that have been members 31 to 40 years.
We're, we're down to the last three words of the Torah, and the last, the, the word is le'ene, in the eyes of. And of course, lamed has to do with teaching. So how appropriate. So we recite together the Kavanah, the blessing for writing of Torah. Havinu Kotein Sefer Torah Zod L'Shem Kishat Sefer Torah. Amen. Behold, I write this Torah scroll for the sake of the holiness of Torah. So somehow we all need to be connected through my, my wrist here. Okay.
we start this section with the families. Feel free if you have more than one child here and they're in different age groups, come up twice. It's more than okay. Families with children who are in grades six through eight, please come up. Families with children who are in the sixth, seventh, or eighth grades.
children in kindergarten, first grade, or second grade, K through two.
sorry. <laughs>
another very special category. Anyone who has ever chanted from the Torah, laid from the Torah, please come up now. Thank you. 
Sefer Torah Zot, the Shem Kedushat Sefer Torah.
need a little time for the ink to dry before we can roll it up and, and celebrate with it. So. they used to say, talk among yourselves? <laughs> so I'm going to read from uh, the very end of um, uh, the Torah, uh, Parsha Vizot HaBracha. I don't have a chumash in front of me to tell you where it is, but it's at the very end of Deuteronomy. And I'm reading about, uh, really, the last paragraph after, after Moses gives his last bracha to the people and, he's, uh, and he prepares himself to die. Uh, this is the passage where that occurs. And it really looks like the last paragraph in the Chumash uh, about uh, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Okay. And which verse is from? 10. 10. Okay. So I get to be the first guy with a number. Vayal Moshe, Mervo, Moab, El Harnavo, Rosh Hapiska, Asher Alpine, Refo, Vayare, Wadonai, and Poha. There is no prayer 
for giving thanks for acquiring a new Sefer Torah. But I will say uh, the end of this longer prayer, which is generally said at the end of studying uh, a particularly lengthy book of the Talmud or of the Mishnah, and then I'll invite us all to say um, Shehef Yanu together.
lives. Oh, isn't that warm?
thank all of us. I want to wish us blessings in all of our comings and goings. A Shana Tova, a good and healthy and sweet and joyous year. And I will look forward to seeing all of us uh, together again in just a few days. Thank you, everybody. Shana Tova. <laughs>
of a, of a Jewish person who lived there. Um, and that's amazing. You know, yesterday, I went to an art gallery opening in South Deerfield, and the woman who catered the, the event turns out to be Jewish, and she yeah. finds out we are, and she gives us a hug. She said, oh, I came to this town, I thought there were no Jews around. Yeah. She lives across the street from us. Oh, look what your oh, daughter just across the street from us for five years. Yeah. And we didn't know. Yeah. Uh, Davin, who was the, the last rabbi beta vah, she rented a place on, on the street and she said that when she moved in, someone on the street essentially came out to her as a Jew and had lived there for 20, 30 years and never had let anyone know that she was Jewish. And that's in Northampton. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I lived in New York City like that. Okay. With lots of people like that. Yeah. So when I was living in Rowe in, in a circa 1989-90 and had the revelation, the epiphany on the rooftop, I was actually fixing my roof when I had the idea of rabbinical school. And I started just, pe I, I, I started to become aware that I had been kind of keeping it quiet that I was Jewish. And I wasn't advertising necessarily, since my mother always told me you don't advertise being Jewish. That's the whole coming out of Nazi Germany story. But like just normalizing talking about being Jewish was rather tremendous.